Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and we're going to take the next few minutes to look at the print module and see all of the different custom layouts and templates you can make. So let's begin by taking this collection over to the print module. I'll simply click on print there in the module picker, but you can also use Command or Control P in order to navigate directly to the print module. Now the first thing you want to do in the print module is you want to set up your page setup and your print settings. Now on the Mac, there's two buttons. On Windows, there's only one button, but you have access to all of the same settings. So we'll begin with page setup because I need to tell Lightroom what printer I'm using and how to format it. So let's go ahead and select our printer here and choose our paper size. I'm going to go ahead and move up to maybe the 11 by 17 inch paper. I'll keep the orientation the same and then click OK. Now, I need to go into the print settings second, but again, if you're on Windows, this is all in that one dialog. You'll need to select your printer, and then you'll need to come down here and go to your print settings. Now, I'm going to show you how to set up this specific printer that I have. Your printer options here might vary a little bit, but I need to print a manual feed because I'm going to switch this to the fine art paper, which is what I typically print to, the velvet fine art paper. And I really should keep that in mind because I'm going to need to pick a profile when I'm in the print job panel later on. So these have to match or your results will probably give you something less than what you were expecting. So I'll set my media type. The color, I definitely want it in color as opposed to one of the other options. And I'm going to turn the color settings off because I want Lightroom to control the color management, meaning that I want Lightroom to take my images and using the profile that I assign in the print job, I want Lightroom to convert the images from the space they're in in Lightroom, the color space, into the printer space. And I don't want a double color management, which is what would happen if I set up my profile in the print job and set it up here. So I'm going to turn it off. Then you can choose from all the other different options that you have. I might turn off high speed, for example. And now you'll notice in the lower right, it actually says save. So I am going to be saving these settings. And later when I save my template, these settings will be saved with it. Excellent. Now let's move to the right hand side. And you'll notice that we have three different layout styles. You can either do a single image or a contact sheet. That's the first layout style. You can do a picture package, or we can go into the custom package layout. First, we'll take a look at just the single image. You'll also notice right below in the image settings that I can choose to zoom to fill. I could rotate my image to fit and I could choose to repeat one photo per page. Now that doesn't make sense at the moment because we're only looking at one image in one cell. But if we look in the layout area and I were to increase the page grid, for example, now you can see how we're repeating the one image per page. If I turn that off, now you can see because I have multiple images selected in my film strip that Lightroom is going to automatically place one image per cell. Before I close the image settings area, you should also know that if you wanted to add a stroke around each one of your images, you can do so and you can change the color here. And in fact, if I add a little bit of cell spacing, we can kind of see that a little bit more clearly. All right, for now, I'm going to go ahead and turn all of these options off in image settings. And let's close that panel for a moment. In fact, I'm going to right mouse click and set this to solo mode so that I'm only looking at one panel at a time. All right. In the layout panel, since I really only want one image at this point in time, I'm going to decrease the rows and columns, and it would be really helpful if I could actually see the guides that define this area. So let's go to our guides panel, and we'll show the guides. Now we'll go back to layout, and hopefully all these things like margins and cell sizes will make a little bit more sense. We can see that this outer area here, these are the margins, so I'm going to turn those off or at least decrease them by moving all of the margins to the far left. Now you can see the four lines that are left here. Those are the cell size, and I can increase that cell size if I want to. And it would make more sense right now, I think, just because of the orientation of this paper, if I wanted to print this image larger, I should return back to the image settings and tell it to rotate to fit. Of course, if I was trying to print this image with a lot of white space around it, then I might want to turn that off. 
but for now, let's leave it on. All right, let's return back to layout because I think we kind of mastered just the one image per page. But let's see what happens if we want to add multiple rows or multiple columns. So here, I would just enter in the numbers or simply move over the sliders. So this is a great way, for example, if you wanted to print a contact sheet. Some people like the images to rotate. You can see that the horizontal ones and the vertical ones are rotating depending on their orientation. If you didn't like that, you could click on this Keep Square option, in which case all the horizontals would remain horizontals and the verticals would remain verticals. It might just be a little bit easier to see the images this way. All right, let's click off our guides for a minute so that we can see that. See how these, there's no cell spacing in between them. So I might go back to layout and just simply add a wee bit of cell spacing so that we can really see the difference from one image to the next. Okay, so that's how you would lay out a contact sheet. Of course, you can add additional things underneath each one of your images if you go down to the page area. For example, you might want to show some photo info underneath each image. For example, you might want to see the name of the image or something else that Lightroom can gather from the metadata of that file. So if we want to show all the information, we can. We can change the font size if you want to. Um, that's kind of a lot of information to show per image, but I think you get the idea. We also have the option for page options here. We can show page numbers and page info, which is quite helpful. This tells you what the sharpening was set to, what your profile set to, and also what printer you used when you printed this. And we can show crop marks if you know that you're going to cut the images and crop them yourself. We can turn that off for now, and let's go back up to our layout and just not have quite as many rows or columns so we can see a few more of our images a little bit larger, maybe a two by three grid there. Excellent, let's go back to layout style for a moment and switch over to picture package. Picture package is a little different in that it will always give you multiple copies of the same image on the page. But you can come down to the cell area and you can add additional cells. So we can click on any of these buttons in order to add more images, or we can use the drop down menu and select a different size, or we can create edit and then enter in our own custom size. And you notice that the last time I clicked that, because there wasn't enough space on this piece of paper, Lightroom automatically added a secondary piece of paper, and it would continue to do that. And if it's too much, then obviously you could just click on the little X and it would get rid of that. But that's how you would set up your picture package. And of course, you can move these around to redistribute them if you think that you can distribute them better than maybe Lightroom did in the automated uh, way that you added them so that you can add additional copies of the same image on a single sheet of paper. So this should really help um, not waste any paper. All right, the last layout style is the custom package, and it also allows you to add different size cells, but the great thing here is that you can add cells that, for one thing, they overlap, and then all you have to do in order to add an image is select the image from the film strip and drag it into the cell. So here I can select a different image and drag it into that cell. And you'll notice that I can reposition the cells. I can also make the cells larger or smaller. I could lock the photo aspect ratio to the cell. So if I click on that, then you'll notice that the cell changed size so that it would meet the aspect ratio of the image. But again, I can make that larger or smaller. I might want to pull that down and bring this up. And if I wanted to, I could send this to the back. So depending on which image I want to have overlapping the other image, we can just right mouse click, send it back, send backwards or front. You can rotate the cell, you can delete the cell, all sorts of options here in the custom layout. Now, I'm not going to walk through every scenario here. I'm going to show you some custom templates in a minute. But first, let's make sure that we got through all of the different options here on the right side, including some additional options in the page panel. So you can see that you can set your background color here. And I could click on this, and we could choose white, for example, if we were going to an inkjet printer, because we might not want to waste all of that black ink. You can click anywhere in this color area. You can drag outside and sample a color from your photograph. You can use the little elevator bar right here to get more saturation and pick a color that way. So it's up to you what color you want your background. For now, we'll turn that off. 
You can add an identity plate no matter which one of these layout styles you're using. So you can grab either some text and use just the text identity plate, or you can use a graphical identity plate like we did back in the slideshow. All I would need to do is locate the file, and in this case, I will navigate to my demo files, and we'll look at maybe an identity plate, or a watermark would work just fine too. And I'll select this white watermark, and then click Choose. I'll go ahead and click OK, and then we can see that I have a watermark here that I can overlap anywhere on my images. I can also size that and make it larger. What would probably be a better example here is if I'd used maybe the logo for my studio, because we do also have the option to add a watermark. But again, just like in the slideshow module, this watermark is going to overlay on top of each one of my images. And again, I can use something that is a graphical watermark, or we can go in here and just type something in. So we could use our text option here, and then down here you might write something like proof, right? And we can select that, and we can add maybe something that has a little bit thicker of a font, something like impact maybe. And then we can tell it where exactly we want that to um, appear on top of our image and what opacity we want to set that to. So we might want to bring down the opacity but anchor it right in the center of our image. And maybe we need to make that a little bit larger. Again, it all depends on who it is that you are giving these images to or printing these images for as to which options you'll select as far as identity plates and watermarking. Finally, we'll go down to the print job area because there are two things that you can print to. Now, by default, this is set to print to a printer because that's what the majority of photographers will be doing. The draft mode printing, that's going to be a lower quality print, so typically I would recommend that we leave that off. The print resolution, you can leave that off as well. The only reason to turn that on would be